you haven't already optimized your Google Ads campaign settings, then I'm going to walk you through a couple of different things you might want to check just to make sure that your ads are running properly so that you can be getting, you know, some conversions, high return on investment, all that good stuff. So first of all, I'm in the new Google Ads user interface and you can switch between the old and the new one up here, at least for the time being, that might change in the future. But in the new user interface, uh, you'll start by selecting a campaign from up here. So I have a campaign selected and then it's going to show the campaign settings right here. When I click on campaign settings, it's going to pop open a window that looks like this, where we see a whole bunch of different settings for this campaign. First of all, you have your campaign name, so you can edit that here. And then there's your conversion goals. A lot of people miss this. By default, it's just set to account which basically means it's just going to go after every type of conversion that's in the account. We like to use a campaign specific conversion goal. I have a video on, you can look up on my channel that talks about how to set up custom conversion goals. Uh, so we have one set up here, which basically just means we're targeting a specific type of conversion. So people who call the first time or fill out a form, uh, but we don't want to be optimizing for repeat phone calls in this instance. So this is for a lead generation uh, campaign. And then you have a uh, customer acquisition. You can bid equally for new and existing customers, or you can just bid for new customers, depending on your preference there. The marketing objective, this is going to control what goes on with your optimization score and the recommendations, which you'll see over here. And so you want to make sure this is set if you're going to be using the recommendations. Otherwise, it doesn't know what your goal is and so it doesn't know how the AI can't give you recommendations if you don't have this set. So of course you would use sales if it's e-commerce, leads if it's lead generation. Uh, I don't really see the point in using website traffic unless you don't want to track leads. Maybe you're doing a brand campaign. But anyways, typically it's going to be sales or leads. You just want to select one. Make sure you save that there so that your recommendations are accurate. You have the campaign status, so you can enable the campaign or disable it. There's also an option to expand where your ads are showing. Typically, we don't use these two because the search network is not Google. It's other websites that have Google integrated in them, and the traffic there tends to not be so great. And then the display network, if you're running a traditional search campaign, you probably don't want to show your ads on the display network. So we'll normally uncheck those save that and then you have your locations so you can choose where you want to target your ads to run like the actual geographic area so in this example we're doing 15 miles around san antonio texas and you can you do the whole united states you can do an advanced search here and choose a specific location and then there's also this little drop down here that's kind of hidden which most people miss and that is how you want to target people whether it's people who are searching about your target location or people who are actually in your target location nine times out of ten you're going to want to use the presence so essentially you only want to show ads to people who are in your target area otherwise uh, you can use this if but i find it works better to just put the city name in the in the keywords and expand the target area to the whole united states and then you'll get anyone in the United States or whatever country who's searching about that service or product in that location. Uh, so we've got that set. There's, of course, languages. So you can add different languages in here. And you can set your budget. There's also in here... Oh, never mind. It's this next one. Uh, of course, your budget. You can just... It's giving us some predictions of what will happen if we go up or down with the budget. Uh, but that's pretty straightforward. You just set your budget there. And then that's not what we want. We want to hit the drop down here. Uh, what I was going to say is you can change your bid strategy. You can also set a max cost per click here. So we don't want to pay any more than $5 per click, which can be really helpful so that it doesn't just blow through your budget on a couple of clicks that don't even lead to a conversion. Now, of course, you can change your bid strategy here if you want to go to maximize conversions or whatever. And then automatically created assets, tend, we tend to leave this off. Otherwise, it, the AI will just start generating all sorts of stuff that tends to be somewhat irrelevant. So 
I like to just leave that turned off. You could also set a start and end date for your campaign. So if you just want to run it for like a se through your season and you don't want to worry about having to turn it off at a specific time, you can select an end date. You can also select a start date if you don't want if you want to set it up and have it start at a specific time, you can do that. And then there's also some more AI stuff here where you can have Google essentially create broad match keywords for you. I tend to leave that off because then you don't really have any control of what's going on. And then there are some additional settings here. Of course, Google loves to hide stuff <laughs> in all these drop downs. So you've got value rules. You can set specific rules about how you want your conversions to be attributed, attributed. Um, ad rotation. So typically you're going to want to optimize for the best performing ads. That's usually how it is by default. Uh, there's some lead form settings. I won't really go into too much about that. Campaign URL options. Dynamic search ad settings. If you're using those, you'll find those settings here. You can also exclude IPs and restrict, uh, set up some brand restrictions as well. So those are the campaign settings. Most people don't take much time to look through these or set these up properly. So if you do take some time to go through and make sure these are set up the right way, it's definitely going to uh, put you above the you know a majority of people who are running um, ads, if at least in in niches that are not super competitive. Uh, but again, make sure you go through, check all these, make sure they're set right in it should help improve the performance of your ads. So I hope you found this helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to get back to them there. Look, if you're the type of person that just doesn't even want to deal with Google Ads anymore, <laughs> then you can always reach out to me. Uh, my company is Missoula SEO Geek. I'll leave a link to my website down below, but we do manage Google ads for different companies and different industries and you can come learn about what we do, what makes us unique. You can even read some of the testimonials from some businesses that we've taken from zero to over a million in revenue like this one here and really just see that, you know, this is the type of thing that's going to explode your business growth. So feel free to reach out. You can always give us a call or contact us through our website and look forward to working with you.